Hello friends, now that I've tested the Fujifilm X-T for its video capabilities, it is time to give it some thoughts if it is as good as I hope it is for the things that I want my one and only camera to do while I travel the world. I need to know that the X-T4 delivers in all the areas I want it to deliver. That means its video functions needs to be of high quality for my stock footage, as this is something I sell online to fund my travels a passive source of income. So I'll test the video features that matters to me. And that is the disclaimer for this video. This picture was shot handheld, 4K, 50 frames per second, with no warp stabilizer added in post. It was shot using the F-Log profile that looks like this. I'll show you several more samples throughout the video, so stick around. I'm going to test its video features like 4K, 60 frames per second, shot in F-Log and 10-bit, I'm going to shoot 240 frames per second. Something really cool when you have a camera that can shoot 250 frames per second. Autofocus, slow motion, that's something you, you just have to test it. But not on grass waving in the wind like this. Oh no, I hooked up with some wakeboarder friends of mine for the 240 frames per second test. Even though I don't think I will use that very much, but this camera can shoot 250 frames per second, which is awesome. I will test the IBIS and autofocus and do the vlogging test, the video logging on the go test. That's something that actually means something to me since I want to vlog on the go, I travel all the time. So having this as a vlogging camera as well as for stills and video makes a difference, especially if I want to bang out a vlog with slightly better production quality than using just my phone. Coming from Panasonic cameras that has major autofocus disabilities, I just want autofocus that works. All right, Panasonic. I used to have Panasonic cameras and the autofocus there never worked. Yeah. And I will be using my one and only lens for the camera, which is the 16 to 55 f2.8 lens. The setup right there. There. There is also a bonus. Yes, there is a bonus for you, dear friend of the channel, at the end of this video. So stay tuned until the end. And specifically new friends of the channel, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell as well to be notified of new videos coming here on the channel. I do so many cool things. I go to Tokyo to do time-lapse photography. I hang out with lions in Africa for six months. That's going to be a video series in itself. Just saying definitely subscribe just for that okay let's dive in i film a lot of wildlife in africa every year i need to know that the quality coming out of the xt4 is equal to or better than this shot i filmed with my old gh5 this is 4k 50 frames per second shot in f-log on the xt4 ungraded it looks like this graded ungraded color graded not graded I like the grading process, that's why I would shoot in a log profile, F-log profile. When you hear log profile, that really means a very flat profile. So you can get all the details back when you process or grade the footage in post. Since I shoot video to sell a stock footage online, high quality footage is a must. And I've got great news. The picture really speaks for itself. It is good, plenty good enough for my uses. As I've said before, I am not huge on these techie numbers, but 10 bit 4K 60 frames per second with a small crop factor at 200 megabits per second shot in a log profile means a high bitrate, less compression and better preservation of details in the picture. That again equals a higher quality clip. Boom. Maybe I am a bit geeky on these technicals after all. I could just as easily have used one of the many excellent film simulations Fuji has to offer that I would, for example, use when I was video logging on the go. Excellent for vlogging. Don't have to think about anything, anything. Just plug and play. In with the footage, just edit. There you go. Done for vlogging. Perfect. Mm. Yes, nailed it. You really don't need more than 25 frames per second full HD for basic vlogging like this anyway. And the IBIS in the X-T4 does a decent job. I could see some warping at the edges when I shot some B-roll in 50 frames per second, which doesn't matter to me for vlogging, but would be a huge deal when shooting handheld for stock footage. So I hope this will be fixed with a future firmware upgrade. You can see the warping at the edges in this picture. Panasonic is definitely better on the IBIS. For vlogging though, the IBIS is good enough. Same with the autofocus, but coming from a Panasonic system, I think pretty much any other camera system would crush it on autofocus. 
Here are some more IBIS tests. This is with IBIS completely disabled. The lens isn't stabilized either, so this is about as shaky as it gets when you're just walking straight ahead. This is the same test with IBIS. Here is both IBIS and digital image stabilization activated. That comes with a tiny crop. What do you think? You be the judge and let me know in the comments below. Let's check the script here for this one. The dedicated switch here. It's here, right here. You can switch between stills and video, which is something I really missed, especially in Africa shooting wildlife when you have to be quick to react. I know I missed quite a few banger shots because I didn't have this switch, fumbling around with settings when I went from photo to video and vice versa. A switch like this would have avoided or at least limited that problem. So having that on this Fujifilm is just amazing. I really, really like it. Movie, still, movie, still. Easy, very easy. Never miss a banger shot again. On either video and stills. Fantastic. Yeah, boy. Yeah, baby. And just the sound as well. Listen. <laughs> so sad. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop now. Just fooling around here. That's what happens when you um, when you lose it. Making a video on YouTube and you just lose it. You want to say everything perfect and it's not, and you just start fucking around. Yeah. Right. By the way, subscribe for that Africa series where I did a photo project on wild male lions in Botswana for nearly six months. It's going to be awesome, I promise you. Back to the topic, which is the Fujifilm X-T4's video capabilities. I had the great pleasure of filming my mates that are really good at wakeboarding. If I was going to test a super slow motion at 240 frames per second that I would hardly use anyway, I wanted to test it on something really cool. Not just grass blowing in the wind like this. So check this out. At 240 frames per second, you can clearly see the compression in the image when you are dealing with a lot of details, like in this picture. Filming tighter seems to fix it, as you don't have that many details in the picture. This happens because the picture is much more compressed, which isn't ideal. So I'd never upload this, for example, to sell as stock footage, as I just don't think the quality is good enough. It's very cool though, especially since it has autofocus at 240 frames per second. My conclusion to the Fujifilm X-T4's video capabilities is that it is very good. I, I like it. I like using it. It has the log profile, the log, the F-log profile integrated from the start as opposed to my Panasonic system where you actually had to buy the F-log profile as a separate firmware upgrade. And I think that's really dumb. When you buy a camera, I expect to be able to use and utilize all of its capabilities to the fullest without having to buy a stupid software upgrade. Come on, what is that? Anyway, you don't have to think about it for the X-T4. Fujifilm has this covered, which is fantastic. And I do like working with the F-log footage. It looks good. I don't think there's any big difference to my GH5. I don't think I will notice anyway, unless you are really go geeking out on the, on the nitty bitty, I don't know, bit rates and stuff like that. But I'm not huge, super huge on the tech things. I just want to go out there and create. Welcome to Central Kalahari Game Reserve. If you want to see techie videos on, on this camera right here, there are 
I don't know, thousands here on YouTube. I just want to see that it makes me happy with the result and it, it's on level with my previous camera, which was the Panasonic GH5. All right, my friends, before the bonus I spoke of at the start of this video, I just want to say again, subscribe to my channel and squeeze that bell button to be notified of future content here. I really appreciate it and it helps me make more and better content for you guys. I cannot wait to get traveling again to start creating what I want this channel to be all about, which is traveling and making good content from wherever I travel and this lifestyle. So subscribe and uh, yeah, thank you for that. Right, the bonus is if you want to test the 4K 60 frames per second shot in F-Log 10-bit or whatever, yes, I think it's 10-bit. You can do that, you can test it yourself because I have included a Dropbox folder in the description below. You can click on it, you can download it, you can play around with it, do whatever you want with it. See, to, it, like if you're debating getting this camera right here, yeah, go for it, it's free. You're welcome. And thanks for watching, appreciate it. Okay, one more thing before you go, my friends, is that if you want a full conclusion, whether or not this is the perfect camera for me when I'm traveling, the next video will be the conclusion video, where I go through all the features, the time lapses, I've made more time lapses with it now, I've taken much more photos that I'm really happy with, and um, yeah, probably filmed more with it for the next video as well. If you want a full conclusion, Next video, next video. Make sure you squeeze the bell button because that's the real subscription, because that's the real subscribe button. Really, it is. That's how YouTube is now. You have to subscribe and then subscribe again. How weird is that? But I didn't make YouTube. I just, I just make videos. So there you go. Next video is the conclusion and I will see you there, hopefully. Okay, bye bye. The screen set up right there so I can check. If my hair is good, my scar is really... Oh shit, I need to... Nah, f*** it. I'm not going to adjust the lighting because, just because I have a cool pirate scar right here. <sighs> that's the camera, that's the screen. I can see. Do I have crazy hair? No, it looks fine. It's fine. <laughs>